Welcome to Knowledgeable Aging. I'm your host, Jason Kotar. Joining us today to talk about improvising creative process for the aging population in COVID-19 is Kunle Adewale. With over a decade of experience as an artist and educationist, Kunle founded Tender Arts Nigeria in 2013, a social enterprise and nonprofit organization which aims to positively impact children, youth, and adults. He has impacted over 15,000 beneficiaries through his art programs in Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, and the United States. He currently leads the largest arts and health network on the continent of Africa through the Arts and Medicine Fellowship for students and professionals in arts and health located in Nigeria. He has featured as a panelist and keynote speaker at arts and health related conferences in Nigeria and abroad. The presented content does not provide or constitute medical, financial, or legal advice. The content is for information purposes only. Viewing or listening to the content does not constitute a physician-patient, dentist-patient, fiduciary-client, or attorney-client relationship. How are you doing today, Kunle? I'm doing very well. Thanks so much for having me today, Jason. Yep, thank you. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Before we get started, Kunle, for those that are joining us for the live webinar, if you have any questions, type your questions in. Time permitting, we will do everything in our power to get your questions answered. Who is Kunle Adewale? <laughs> thank you so much, Paul asking that and that's a very big question you're asking um uh, so Kunle Adewale um, is a visual artist based in Lagos Nigeria uh, I'm a visual artist and um, I love painting I love uh, the use of acrylic and mixed media uh, beyond that I'm an art in health practitioner and I've been doing this for the past eight years in Nigeria uh, facilitating creative engagement for children, young people, and older adults uh, in Nigeria, uh, in the continent of Africa, and also in the United States. So um, as an artist, I'm also an Atlantic Fellow of Elk Equity in Brain Health at the University of California, San Francisco, uh, uh, where I did a research on understanding the connection between creativity and neuroscience. Uh, for me, it's very important to use art to elevate spirits, to use art to up uplift people in the midst of a public health crisis, in the midst of challenges. And these are things that have been doing for some years now. And I find it very interesting. I find it very inspiring. So Kunle, how did you come into using art for therapeutic purposes? Um, for me, over the years, I, uh, you know, graduating from the college about 11 years ago, uh, we were not taught uh, on the benefit of art beyond uh, just using art for aesthetic purpose, but we were not really educated on the therapeutic purposes of art. And then so through uh, intuition and personal research, I discovered that art really helps to transform uh, the human experience in a way that one can never imagine that art can really be used for healing and then so that really happened uh for me uh about 10 years ago or so after i graduated from college i started thinking about how i may be able to introduce creativity in hospital in care home in nursing home in community center i mean just in a way that art can really help to shape uh the experience of people in a way that it helps to bring healing and well-being and health to their personal life and really help to improve their health outcomes. So this has been part of my has been part of my uh, journey ever since I started. So, so speaking to our aging population, Kunle, how is art helpful? So art is really very helpful in different ways. I mean, for people that have, um, say, people that have memory loss, uh, heart is really helpful in helping to uh, helping them to have access to uh, their memory in a way that they can remember things they, they can no longer remember uh, through music, uh, through uh, drawing or painting. And heart can also help to help them in terms of communication because sometimes uh, the older adults can really express themselves through words. And so art become a means of communication for them. And art really help to reduce depression in older adults uh, because, um, and because of the uh, loneliness that aging population experience, 
you know, for them being isolated and being lonely, art really helped them to be able to socialize. Art really helped them to be able to find connection and through creativity and creative engagement. It could be a creative engagement, maybe in a nursing home, in a care home, or even right there in their own personal home, where they are involved in art making process, whether with their children or with their grandchildren. So this, for me, I think is just something very incredible. Art also help in terms of uh, improving the quality of life of the older adults uh, in a way that, um, you know, imagine uh, someone who has really been uh, depressed, somebody who has really been overwhelmed by situations of life, and uh, in a way, and that, that person is involved in creative process and in creativity, and then you realize that that person's joy is restored, that person's life is restored, and then you realize that being depressed is no longer the situation now. Being uplifted is a new experience for that person. And the joy becomes contagious, becomes evident because of the creative experience that person has actually encountered. So Kunle, how can seniors explore arts as a coping mechanism in the midst of the pandemic? Um, you know, because of the, the situation we all we are all experiencing around the world today, um, you realize that creativity. I often tell people that creativity is not cancelled. Creativity can never be limited, right? Uh, creativity cannot be restricted. There is social distancing, but with art there are no barriers. With creativity there are no barriers. In fact, art becomes a bridge that connects people. Art becomes a bridge that unites people. Art becomes a bridge that helps people to socialize in the midst of social distancing and also in the midst of the pandemic. And for older adults that, you know, that are in nursing home, many of them have not been allowed, uh, you know, the privilege of seeing their loved ones. In fact, they are not allowed, the loved ones are not allowed to see them physically then the use of technology becomes very imperative. It becomes very important. So for the old, older adults in the midst of the pandemic, I believe that a simple art making process is something that I think is very possible because older adults can start exploring uh, images uh, around them by you know, uh, being involved in, by, by standing up from where they are, by exploring the environment, by going to if they are personal or private library, they can just go to their private library and they can just go pick up book and look at images. So just 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 enjoy the pictures, just to enjoy photography, and that way the books become like a library, right? It becomes it becomes like a gallery that actually the older adults can actually uh, actually experience, right? And the older adults can actually experience a virtual um, art exhibition by being able to view exhibitions that are curated online. And then just by looking at images of nature, images that are uplifting, images of maybe animals or anything can really help, just help them to be able to connect to the outside world. Because one of the, one of the things that came out of this COVID-19 is the mental health problem, right? It's really a huge one, not just in Nigeria, not just in the US, but around the world, right? But to be able to mitigate the mental health challenges that people are experiencing in the midst of the pandemic. So what is happening basically is that art can really help, help people to have a good mental health very, very strongly. And I would say that creativity is some, it's a simple process, right? So other adults can be involved in, in self art making process, maybe by doodling, by doodling on white paper, by scribbling, and by using maybe crayon or pencil crayon, using acrylic pen, I mean, using anything, using their fingers to draw, to paint. That form of activity helps the blood in their body to flow. It's really helped them in a great way 
that really help to like, you know, enhance their emotional well-being, right? And that also can also help in terms of intergenerational engagement. For instance, now older adults who are on a lockdown with their children or with their grandchildren at home can sit together and maybe through storytelling, they can have a conversation. They can talk about a particular picture, maybe a picture they took together maybe about a few years ago. And then they can start talking about what that experience meant for just having conversation through creativity can really help to uh, boost uh, the emotional well-being or boost the emotional well-being of, um, of older adults in the midst of the pandemic. So these are part of a simple uh, uh, creative process that people can really experience in the midst of the pandemic. A simple exercise of just stretching your hands or just walking around or just dancing, just simple body movements goes a long way and uh, in helping older adults to really experience um, quality of life in the midst of the pandemic. Like I said, creativity does not require anything that is sophisticated. It's all about simple process. It's all about simple, simple process. So I believe very strongly this is something that is, that, that, that is workable in the midst of the pandemic. Very good. Uh, so Kunle, when creative, if when you're creating works of art, which is more important, the process of the art making or actually the finished product? So I want to say that um, the process is more important than the product itself. Because through the process of art making, that is where the healing lies. That is where the joy lies. That is where the uplifting lies. Being able to dive in into creative works, into creating works of art, into creative process. That is where the joy of art making lies, not in the end product, rather in the process. Because when you do it that way, you are doing it in a way that is not judgmental. You are not going to judge yourself because your self is not perfect. No, you are not going to judge yourself because your drawings are not, your lines are not straight. It's not about straight lines. It's not about perfect circle, it's all about the process, the process of creating. And then you've been able to express yourself and the joy that you experience in expressing yourself, those are the take away from that particular engagement that you are having, right? You know, if you get to start analyzing the end result of your work and you start judging your work, it can bring in depression. So. The goal is not to make a masterpiece. The goal is to enjoy your journey. The goal is to enjoy the process. The goal is to create. And whatever you create is a perfect experience for you, specifically for you. So, uh, so uh, the creative process is more important than the product of the creative process. I want to shift now. Kunle, to organizations that work with the aging population, how are they leverage, leveraging technology in arts during the pandemic? So I think that um, the arts and technology now are the, you know, the links that, that organizations can really explore, especially those that are working with the older adults. Uh, there are so many resources online uh, through YouTube, uh, Zoom party, I mean, People do face painting, Zoom party, um, Zoom or virtual art making process. So there are so many resources online that um, organizations that are working with um, the aging population or older adults can really explore. There are a lot of um, digital museums and galleries and art exhibitions that I think that uh, organizations can really introduce to the population they are working with either by using iPad or other digital platform or digital devices in a way that older adults are not just on a lockdown. Why they're on a lockdown, they're experiencing art, they're experiencing creativity, they're enjoying works of art. And that in a way can really help them to reconnect to, probably to, to some of the things they've seen before. And that way it, it can really spark a conversation between older adults who are locked down in the same building. They can start having it. Oh, wow, look at that particular sunrise. Oh, it reminds me of when I visited Kenya. Oh, that's giraffe. You know, just being able to talk.
just being able to have conversation. So, so I, I believe that uh, these are things that uh, organizations that work with other adults can really explore, and they can also connect to uh, the cultural art organizations in their communities that can really help to provide virtual uh, programs, right? Uh, even though even though they don't have art supplies, digital devices can be used to create digital art, right? So they can use yes. So this most most of the smartphones that we have this day, most of the digital devices that are you know made this day are some features that can really enhance digital art making process. So without without traditional art supplies, uh, an older adult probably can just use their hands to draw a circle in the color, just being able to scribble on the iPad, on a smartphone. And that process is something that is very, very important. We have a couple of questions, Kunle. One of them says, I find myself to be creative. I want to be creative. How do I start? Well, just that. <laughs> just that. I mean, that's just how to start. You know, um, let me put it this way. When a child is born and that child wants to start working, the child does not ask for permission. Can I work? The child does work. So you have that permission to be, to be able to create, to express yourself. And in expressing yourself, you do it in a way that is not judgmental. You do it in a way that it brings joy to you. Creativity is all about you being able to express yourself in the best way that really brings joy to you. Whether it's by whether through dancing, I found myself in a situation whereby I was dancing in the rain. So some people it might look crazy. So then it's not about what people think about my creative process. It's all about what that creative process is doing for me. Right? So you're not going to like, oh, what do you think about my drawing? And then people say, wow, well, this drawing does not look perfect. No, it's not about showing people or sampling your creative process. It's all about you being able to create and the impact the process of creating that work, the impact it makes on you. So yeah. you've been creative and you wanted to do something, just start. You can start scribbling. You can start doodling. There are enough materials on YouTube that can just DIY, do it yourself, that you can just look. There are certain, there are, there are certain materials that are paid by numbers, right? Paid by numbers. You, you have the main picture, and then you realize that everything is like a puzzle. One, two, three, and the paint are actually numbered. By the time you take your time, paint by number, by number, and by doing it, going forth and back, by the time you spend a few days, you have a full picture. Then you, you'll be shocked that you're able to do that. Either you paint by number or you express yourself. Either way, creativity cannot be limited. Yeah. How do you recommend, Kunle, that a caregiver introduce art into the life of an aging person, whether it's a family member? Fantastic. So probably one of the things that can happen is by having conversation with an older adult just trying to find out what really resonates with them, what makes them happy. For instance, now, somebody might say, oh, I, I love seeing the sunrise. So when, you say, when somebody says, I love seeing the sunrise, so you can really go online, just Google sunrise, and you get a picture of a sunrise, right? And you're able to show it to that person. And they're probably by providing a simple art supply like this Crayola, and then, maybe asking the person to just draw what he or she sees. You'll be shocked to see what they can do. Just, just by observing pictures and being able to replicate it in their own way. It doesn't have to look exactly like the picture they have been shown. But being able to connect to the sunrise the person likes. And then the person might start telling you story of, oh, when I used to like wake up very early in the morning, I go hiking before the sunrise. And they start telling you story, so many stories of the sunrise encounter in their life just, just by asking questions. So I think so one of the ways of, of helping 
uh, recommending ads for somebody that, that uh, an older adult with a family member is starting a conversation because creativity sometimes thrives better in conversation. Yep. Creativ creativity thrives better in relationship. Creativity does not thrive in isolation. So you, you need just a point of connection, a spark, a light, just for that person to be able to, to do something. Yeah. So Kuna, you've been, you started the Tender Arts Nigeria in 2013. Two part yes. question. First question, per first part is, what have you learned? What surprised you most in the seven years, eight years since you uh, first started Tender Arts Nigeria? Uh, I, I think what, what has really uh, been a great game for me is the transitioning from working with children to working with older adults. Because when we started Tender Art Nigeria, it was more based on working with children. Now we work with persons living with dementia or Alzheimer's disease in Nigeria and also in the United States. And that transitioning for me is also a process. You realize that I've been laying, I've been saying so much, so much about process, process, and process, right? And so one of the things I have seen is how older adults start exhibiting some childlike spirit when they start creating because <laughs> you you as as adults when somebody when somebody give you crayon a pencil crayon you feel like oh no you're too more matured to use crayola you want to use something more sophisticated but you realize that as you continue to grow and age you realize that it's like you, the life goes back to a circle from being a child to returning to, to being a child in attitude and also in some of the things that they do. So I have seen that, that transitioning from working with children to working with older adults and also some of the similarity in terms of the creative expression between the children and older adults. You see that there's so much similarity in terms of the output of their creative works. Obviously, Kunle, part two of this question was, you have a global reach now, a global voice with everything you're doing. How, what's the difference for you as far as what you've seen in Nigeria versus the rest of the world when it comes to the aging population and creative arts? So what I've seen so far is, is that uh, there's so much resources creative-wise uh, in advanced countries, as opposed to like a uh, developing country like Nigeria, where the, the government, um, private institutions or public institutions do not really think so much about the aging population. The focus is more on children and women and young people. And then you realize that there's so much that we have to do in catching up with the advanced countries. However, I would say that through my organization, Art and Medicine Program and Art and Medicine Project, we've been able to find the ways of connecting with older adults in Nigeria in facilitating creative engagement. And that has continued to grow over time and we are still scaling up what we're doing. Uh, in developed countries, we realize that there is a budget allocated to fund uh, the creative experience of older adults. I mean, very big money. <laughs> but you come to this side of the world, we are just trying to see this personal fund to be able to push uh, for art workshop or art projects that can really benefit the older adult or the older population. So I mean, these are the disparity I'm saying. However, I think that uh, as we continue to do what we're doing here in Nigeria, we'll continue to gather more support in scaling up the impact of our work and engagement in working with the older adult population in Nigeria. So somebody else asked the question, follow up with the developing countries, Nigeria, et cetera. When you've got an aging population in an urban center versus a rural center, a, a rural area, how is that, uh, what's the difficulties as far as the technology and, and the reach with uh, creative arts when you have individuals in an urban location versus a, uh, a rural location? So I, I, I think that that is actually one of the challenges that we see uh, because even people who are in the center, in the city, are still not able to really have so much access to the art, right? As opposed to like thinking about people in the rural areas. 
So we are still we are still talking about people in the urban, right? People in the city being able to have access to creativity or to creative uh, to creative engagement. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that there is a huge disconnect for people who are in the rural area in terms of having access to art making uh, engagement. Um, participation for people who are in the city is quite low. And that is why we are we are continuing to uh, mobilize uh, young people and professionals to think of ways of introducing more creativity and more creative engagement uh, to people who are living in the city. And then we can see how we can scale up that and uh, being able to spread out and reach out to people in the rural areas. What do you think is going to happen when you look back 10 years from now that we're going to learn about arts during the pandemic? I think one of the things we're going to learn for me in 10 years time is the relevance of art more than ever before. Because we never knew how important technology is until now. I mean, look at the way we're speaking together. You're in the US, I'm in Nigeria. Now people now depend so much on Google Meet. People depend so much on many video applications to be able to talk, write, so, and then beyond conversation, people depend so much on digital platforms to be able to facilitate creative engagement. So that in 10 years time, it will really help us to remember how innovative art was during the pandemic era. In terms of using digital platforms, uh, facilitating digital art exhibition, introducing digital museums, that people can really go to museum virtually without going physically because of the uh, COVID protocols, right? So these are the things I will remember in 10 years time to come. The innovation that happened during the pandemic in facilitating creative engagement in helping people in their journey in supporting families, in lockdown, in supporting older adults, in lockdown, in supporting children who are experiencing stress and anxiety, in supporting humanity generally going through mental health challenges art becomes relevant just like science is relevant yeah last question kune somebody said if if you're watching this do you have one message that you would relate to somebody who who's struggling mentally right now with a pandemic whether it's themselves or their aging parents what can you say to them Hmm. What I would say is all will be well. Just a positive word. This too shall pass. The pandemic is just a, it's just a phase. It has happened before, and with time, it disappeared. So the pandemic has not come to stay. It's just here, just for some time. Right? So what I would say is all will be well. Very good. Well, Kunle, how can people find you? So I think people can connect with me through my website, www.kunleadewale.com. And also they can send me uh, an email through contact at kunleadewale.com or olakunleadewale at gmail.com. So these are the true, uh, the, the channel through which people can reach me uh, through my email or my Gmail. And the public can check out some of the things I'm doing in Nigeria and around the world through my website. For those that are going to listen on the podcast, I'll go ahead and spell out. Uh, Kunle Adewale is spelled K-U-N-L-E-A-D-E-W-A-L-E.com. So that's, if this email is contact at kunleadewale.com. His other email is O-L-A and then Kunle Adewale. So it's L-O-L-A-K-U-N-L-E-D-E-W-A-L-E at gmail.com. And of course, his website is www.kunleadewale.com. As far as Knowledgeable Aging, you can find all of our archive webinars on our website, knowledgeableaging.com. You can also go to our YouTube page, type in Knowledgeable Aging. I encourage you to subscribe. We update that five to six times per week. If podcasts are your thing, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, etc. Till next time, I'm your host, Jason Kotar, and this is Knowledgeable Aging.